Hi, this is a short review of the Canon EFS 55-250 f4-5.6 IS lens. I just got this lens uh, not too long ago. Um, this is an image stabilizer lens um, and it also um, has it's also an EFS lens, meaning it's only compatible with Canon crop sensor bodies like the 500D. Um, this is a simple um, affordable telephoto zoom lens. Um, I think if, you, if you're using the Rebel series cameras and you're looking for a, a, a lightweight um, and cheap uh, telephoto zoom lens, uh, this makes um, a very, very good choice. It was actually designed to complement the Canon kit lens actually, so 55 to 250. Um, not surprisingly, the design is very similar to the Canon kit lens. Um, in, and in terms of the uh, build quality too. Um, it's a 5 times zoom range. The effective focal length is 88 to 400 mm. Um, it's all made up of plastic, mostly plastic, um, and not surprisingly the, the um, lens mount over here is also plastic. But then again, um, it's actually fine with me because this lens is so light. Um, and so you you don't really need a metal mount. Um, the filter size is 58mm, it's the uh, same with the kit lens. And overall it's a uh, small and it's very compact lens to bring around. Uh, the zoom ring is actually pretty huge, it's, it's uh, has nice rubber uh, feel to it. The zoom is, is actually pretty smooth um, and when it extends the barrel is, um, is uh, quite firm, it's quite solid and um, it, it doesn't extend very long actually, this is the longest the lens extends compared to other Canon telephoto zoom lenses, this is actually pretty short um, it's a simple design, there's no distance scale in this lens and there's also no full time manual focusing so it's uh, so when you're in AF mode um, you shouldn't turn the, the um, uh, focus ring and it's uh, very easy to, to forget that <laughs> you are in AF mode and you end up turning the ring and this could actually damage the AF uh, motor inside um, so just something to take note of um, the, the focus um, system over here um, is, is, is not the Canon USM it's, there's no ultrasonic motor over here, it just uses this very simple uh, AF motor um, the focusing is generally quite good it is it is not very very fast, but it, neither is it um, very slow either. I think it's it's uh, acceptable for this kind of lens. Focusing speed is acceptable. Um, focusing accuracy is actually pretty good, even in low light situations. Um, the focus uh, locks on quite well. Uh, just let me show you how fast the focus uh, is. Sorry. Yeah, so this is just how fast the lens focuses. Um, so overall, um, focusing I think it's okay, it's fine. Um, this lens has uh, quite a short minimum focusing distance of 1.1 um, meters. And what this means is that it, uh, it yields a quite, quite a high magnification um, ratio and it's actually pretty good for close-up uh, images of uh, flowers and nature, stuff like that. If you add an extension tube, um, you could easily turn this into a macro lens. So if you're interested in close-up, this lens could could do fine too. Uh, in terms of image quality, uh, generally speaking, I think it's impressive for, for this kind of lens. Uh, the center of the frame is sharp wide open. Um, however, the borders are not so good wide open. Um, but when you stop down one stop from wide open setting, even the borders are actually pretty decent and very usable. Um, flare and chromatic aberrations are virtually not an issue with this lens. It's so well controlled uh, because Canon uses a, I think a special uh, uh, low dispersion element or something inside the lens. Um, distortion um, is, is um, it's present. Um, but it's not a big issue at all if uh, if you're shooting uh, normal stuff. Uh. So uh, the the only real issue with the image quality, actually with this lens, is the vignetting. Vignetting is um, quite strong, and it's visible uh, wide open at all focal lengths um, of this um, of all focal lengths of the zoom range. 
Um, the good thing, thankfully, is that um, it can be eliminated after you stop down or one stop from the wide open aperture. So, um, I, I, I think in, in my experience, if I shoot indoors, I mean, I think it's not so much an issue. I guess the real issue is when you're shooting outdoors uh, and you're shooting a blue sky and stuff like that, then you can, then you can really see that uh, there's a bit of big netting. Um, so, as compared to other lenses, um, I, I've, I've used the 75 to 300 before this, and um, this lens is a bit shorter than the 75 to 300. So, losing 50 mm on the telephoto end, um, it's actually not a big deal. It, it's not a, a lot of uh, zoom that you, do, you that you lose. I think the better thing is that you actually gain. Uh, 55 mm on the wide end, and this lens is actually wider than most uh, 7300 7, zooms or 7200. Um, as usual, Canon does not provide a hood or a lens pouch uh, with this uh, class of lens, and so you got to get your own hood. And the frustrating thing about Canon hoods are that it's so hard to find, at least here in Singapore, it's so hard to, to find a Canon hood. So you might have to go get a third party uh, hood um in in good light in in a uh, daytime i think this lens um is fine if you're shooting things like animals things like um what else animals and uh, nature flowers i think this uh, this is a good lens um this lens is not suitable for low light um shooting because really the aperture is just not fast enough um so overall um if you're looking for a simple telephoto zoom lens um, that can carry around very easily, the Canon 55-250 uh, is an impressive lens um, for the price that you pay and definitely I would recommend this lens without reservation.